Hi, my name's Tracy and I'm a mortician. And I'm Trish and I'm not. And welcome back to another episode of... Are you dying to know? Because Trish is dying to know. I am dying to know. We've been doing that for three years. Three years, wow. That intro, three, three years. years. How are you all? Yeah. Hope you're well. Yeah, hello. <sighs> Feels like a long time since we've been together. It does. I mean, I know we've been together, but been together <laughs> video and it's like, seems like a long time. Yeah. We've been busy. You've been on holidays. Uh, you've been on holiday too. Mm. We kind of had a holiday together then. Then Not. you came home and then I, I had mm. extended. Yeah, we've been away. Yes. It's been fun. So, yes, now we're back. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say about a practice. Yeah, because we went up to the warmer climbs up up uh, north of yep, we went uh, up Queens. to Cairns. 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 Where we motivated in the marathon because yep. that's what we like to do. Yeah. Oh, and motivating. then Trace went up to Cape Trip and had yes. a holiday and I came home and went to work. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was nice up Cape Trip. Mm. Yeah, it's with the rainforest. It is. The world. Where the rainforest meets the beach. It's a gorgeous part of the world. And it's, you know, winter here in Queensland, but up there it's tropical. And so it was very nice. Okay, so today we've got a question from Zara V. That's how I'm going to say your name because I don't know if it's Zarav or Zara V, but oh, Zara. Zara V. Hi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How are you? Thanks for sending a question in. I'll sort of paraphrase it because it was a long one. Basically, um, we're going to call you Zara if that's okay. Zara is from the Netherlands and had the experience where somebody she knew was partially embalmed and had a puncture is the terminology you used. We're assuming... Where her tummy was swollen. An aspiration. Said, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it was all done in the room where the deceased was laid out. Um, and Zara made the point of how would the staff have done that without the necessary equipment and like a mortuary set up and, and that sort of thing. So Trace was just going to talk through what a partial embalm is. Because yep. apparently embalming is pretty uncommon in the Netherlands. And um, it's not something that Zara knows about. Yep. Um, and so Trace is going to explain what a partial embalm is and then yep. also how that would have been done. Say if somebody has was being brought home, it was very hot at the time and so the body was starting to break down and so the staff that were caring for that person thought that it was important that they um, did something to stop to that stop decomposition. It, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so that's what they did. And um, so Zara was just wondering how that happened in yeah. a situation where it was in, uh, we're assuming someone's home. Yeah, um, or, or in the viewing room. I'm not sure yeah. if you're talking about at home or in the viewing room because sometimes they have separate viewing rooms from here in the homes yeah. like where the, they don't have the mortuary at the same place yeah. so you know not sure where but um yeah so a partial embalm is um where we're preserving the body for a very short period of time so basically a full embalm so like a week or yeah it's so a days to a week right. so um what we're doing is we're using really mild chemicals uh it's still formaldehyde in them chemicals but it's a really low percentage you know how i've talked about percentages of you know when we embalm a body say a repack going to a different country or going home like for many days or not having a service for months is a really high percentage embalm which we have to do between a three four five percent um with a partial embalm we're using the milder and we're using less chemical too we're using a lot less also you're talking a one to two percent if that with and we're not saturating the body like we do with a full embalm all we want to do is basically preserve that body just slow that decomposition down for a few days to a, a week or a couple of weeks so uh how i do a partial embalm is normally i don't go in through the carotid and uh, drain from the jugular i'll go in my favorite spot is under the arm in the auxiliary some people used to like to use the brachial some of the embalmers where we're doing uh just the embalm through there and to uh drain the blood it's what we call a heart tap so it's basically cavity aspirate so right it's called a Which heart is tap. what i thought you were going to say but what's yeah. a heart tap it's basically called a heart tap because after we we while we're doing the um, partial embalming we put a couple of liters in a couple of liters of fluid in and once we've got two liters in we'll then start to aspirate you know not i didn't know about any of this right so i thought there was just we aspirate or we embalm yeah or we do a cavity embalm yeah yeah right but yeah. i didn't know with a cavity embalm that you went into any arteries i thought you just embalmed no, no. the cavity no no that's just that 
I'm going into the arteries to embalm to preserve the body. So the whole body gets liquid through it. It does, yeah. Right. But we're just using less and a low percentage. Okay. When it's just not as thorough as going through the carotid. Right. But it will go through and you know. So, and is it quicker? The, it is very. It's a lot quicker. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so while that's happening, then you go. So yeah. So usually in a full embalm, we embalm the body first, and we it's usually good to leave the body for a few hours, then aspirate. Why? Because we want that chemical pressure, because you've built up the pressure in the body because you put so much fluid in, chemically in, and that pressure actually helps push through into all the tissues right. to really saturate the body. Right. In this case, we're not wanting to do that. All we want to do is temporary preserve, so we're just partially doing it all. So we don't need that saturation because the person's just there. We just need to stop that decomposition for right. a day or two. Yep. So we're just using less fluid. Normally you could use anywhere from 12 litres, you know, on a full embalm to more, depending on the size of the person. Tend to, when you're using partial embalm, use five litres right. to six, you know, not, you know, not really very much, to pay, but more if it's a bigger person, obviously, the um, amount. But uh, we're just using basically less mm -hmm. in lower percentage and just going in where into whatever artery the, the embalmer prefers. Mm -hmm. Some embalmers might still use the carotid, just not drain from the jugular and use a heart tap. And the heart tap basically is a fancy name for cavity aspirating. That's all we do. Is doing. that because sometimes the aspirator might nick the heart? But we want to go into the heart right? when we do a partial. So when, it, when we're doing a partial, we're doing the partial, like I say, a couple of litres in, we'll do the uh, cavity aspirating. So we'll do the incision into the uh, the the uh, torso and the tummy area, put the uh, trocar in and aim straight to the middle of the chest where your heart sits. Sorry, I just hit my mic, where the heart sits. So um, it's, it's called a heart tap because we want the blood to come straight out right. from the heart. Why? Yeah, because that's where your drainage is coming because we're not draining from the jugular. We still need to drain some of that blood out because that's But not all of it. Yeah, we don't do it clear because oh, it's blowing my mind man <laughs> can't keep up okay i didn't know this yeah yeah i don't think we've ever talked about a partial embalm before well, really. i know what a temporary preserve is yeah. a tp but yeah. yeah it's the same thing it's a yeah. tp it's called a tp here oh, i don't think you've ever explained it like this okay okay cool yeah. all right yes yeah you've got my attention yeah so you've so, pierced the heart so the blood's draining from the so heart so yeah we've got that through the trocar through the trocar so i'd leave that there for a little bit just to make sure that clears and clears while we're still putting fluid in through the artery so we're basically fluid in drainage through the mm -hmm. the uh, trocar that's the difference mm -hmm. everybody's different depends on you know cause of death you can normally tell you go yeah feels like enough the skin feels good they've got coverage with the chemical there's enough in finish the embalm process stop that but then do a normal cavity aspirate after that you know just aspirate the whole right. cavity okay. again and, right. and and then put the cavity the fluid cavity in. fluid in yes right so, which we've spoken about before yeah so basically once that embalm's done which is doesn't take very long you stop that embalm and then you do the whole cavity um the normal aspirate and all the areas of the cavity with the trocar, with the trocar that you've got already in there. So just, just to moving. recap, up yeah, and then up, down. Yeah, down. And we, yep. we'll always go through the heart, anyway, yep. like all the organs, and then put the cavity fluid in, you know. So normally with a full embalm, I'd use two bottles of cavity fluid with a, a, just a TP or a temporary like partial embalm just one bottle of cavity fluid. right and and also i think we need to make the point too um if you haven't seen it on the other videos that when you're using the trocar it's got a little cover on it so you're not sucking up flesh yeah no no you're not all you're doing it's, is taking out yeah, fluid in gas yeah mm. you know because we get like i think that lady said oh, she was bloated with some gas yeah. so that trocar was taking the gas away as well so we're getting rid of the gas we're getting rid of the fluid uh, that's what we need to do. Right. So the second part of the question is how do they do that in situ in, say, let's assume somebody's home. So you've got okay. the person home yep. and things are a bit warmer than you expected yep. and the people come in every day like you do when you've got somebody at, at home, home. Yeah, I'll go and, and you check go and on check mm -hmm. um, and maybe, you know, clean them up a little bit or touch up their makeup or do whatever you need to do. Mm -hmm. um, so how would somebody do that process without all the equipment? Yeah, you can do it. Equipment's portable. Right, so you've got your trocar. 
Yeah, so my chore car is not portable because it's a, um, it's connected to the, uh, the water, water system. Yeah, yeah. So mine's um, you know mine's connected by water mine's a hydro truck so it's the water that goes flushes through with the pressure but you can also get portable ones so say uh melissa so who i trained as a mortician and then she became an embalmer then she was my mentor when i was doing my embalming she's a contract embalmer so melissa doesn't have a set place she works she moves around so she's got a tank you know the tank the uh, embalming tank which she takes with her it's, your cool little machine yeah so yep. she's got a one but it's just the same size it's a bit a heavy machine but she's also got a transportable cavity aspirator so that's a um it's kind of on a pump and it, it's just it what it does when you're pulling out all of the fluid um, it goes into a container, which then she will dispose of in a clinical way. Yes, yeah, so everything gets collected in this, so it's portable. So all of our equipment is very portable. You can have it made portable, and I imagine that's how they would do it because you'd have to have your embalming machine, you have to have some kind of pump, but also the uh, trocar, uh, the aspirator that Melissa uses, you can actually embalm with that as well. Oh, okay. So it can be used as an embalming machine right. as well. So they might have just had that, been mm. a partial embalm. Mm. So you don't need much fluid, you don't need much pressure. So I imagine it they could have just had that, which is a little machine. You might not even seen them walk in with it or go in with it and stuff like that. So the machines we use are portable and you'd be taken anywhere so i think you answered that i think it did and it's like we've talked about the royal family before they get embalmed in situ, in situ. at home yeah you know the embalmers yeah, taking those bodies anyway. yeah the embalmers go to them mm -hmm. and they take all their equipment there so it's you know so it's like yeah so hopefully you <laughs> you understood all that and it was clear <laughs> yeah it was clear it yeah. was interesting thanks yeah. for that question it's, yeah. it's weird because i know we've spoken about temporary preserves TPs, yeah. like way back in the early days yeah. as well so if you go back and watch some of those videos yeah. um and i know we've spoken about cavity embalming and yeah. the trocar and embalming fluid in the cavity as opposed to through the vein through the arteries yeah but i just never knew that you did both at the same time yeah you can yeah yeah right okay yeah. there you go well yeah we learn something every day <laughs> thanks for that question thanks yeah, for answering great. that Trace. yeah yeah, thank if you. If anyone's got question. any questions on anything like that or anything different, send them in. We're happy to answer them. Uh, we've got a lot, but there's a lot of repeat questions there too. So yeah. before you send your question, have a look at the back catalogue and yeah. see if we've answered it already because um, there's a few there that we've, pardon yeah. the pun, done to death. So um, <laughs> there's a few topics there we ain't going to touch on for a while now because yeah, we've you know, just done them we're sick of hearing about them yeah. ourselves and we're sure everyone out there probably is too. So. Yeah, you've probably overheard them a lot. Yes, so yeah. But, you know, please do send them in and please like, subscribe and share with your friends because we're still getting a lot of uh, new subscribers uh, along, which is wonderful. It's great, and, yeah, isn't it? It is. Great. And don't forget, we've got a podcast too. So go check that out wherever you get your podcast from. It's called Are You Dying to Know? Yeah. We need the support and yeah. um, review it or share it and do whatever you need to do so that we get rated because it's not coming up in searches because it's yeah. so new. Yeah. So if you could do that for us, that'd be awesome. Thank that you. Great. Thank you. All right, until next time. Take care. See you guys. Bye. Bye.